Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. What will happen if Janet Yellen raises interest rates? And I basically said that the crash will come sooner rather than later. Uh, and she did raise interest rates, uh, even though, as you will see in the upcoming charts, the rate rise was absolutely insignificant, yet the perception by the markets uh, is, uh, I mean, it looks like it's going to be devastating. Um, my insiders and people that were, that were subscribed to my Wealth Cycles uh, service have seen this chart many, many, many times. Uh, I've been referring to this chart for more than a year and a half, uh, maybe two years. But this goes back into the mid-50s, the early 50s, and the blue line here is interest rates. It's the uh, effective Fed funds rate, uh, and you see it uh, peak in 1980, and then it uh, pulls back. But the reason I show it is just to show that we're still in this extreme emergency that uh, interest rates have never been zero like this before, especially for this long. Um, they've been close to zero back during the Great Depression, but uh, nothing like this. Um, and then this brick red line, this is the Wilshire 5000 Total Market Cap Index. So it's basically a measurement of the value of the stock market, the 5,000 largest companies in, the, in America. And then the green line here, uh, is base currency, the, the monetary base. Uh, the Federal Reserve incorrectly refers to it as base money. It's currency, not money, and people should start uh, defining the difference between them. Money has to be a store of value. Currency does not. But what you see here is an incredible correlation, and there's also these gray bars. These are recessions, recession bars, and the reason I've left them on here is just to keep on reminding people that uh, recessions happen every two to nine years. Uh, there's a recession. And the periods of e economic expansion between them, we're already in a period that has gone on seven years. The longest ones are nine years. So the longer we go here, the greater and greater the likelihood that there is a recession around the corner. Now, recessions, it's, when, when you hear that we're in a recession, it's a trailing indicator they have to measure the previous quarter's uh, growth in GDP. If, we, if our economy grew, uh, we didn't have a recession. If it shrank, we did. If there's two consecutive quarters that, where the economy contracts, that's considered a recession. So you don't find out when, when they announce that we're in a recession, it means that we've been in a recession for more than six months. Uh, I believe that we've already the recession has already begun. Now I'm zooming up on the exact same chart. I'm zooming up on the area that's uh, this century, so just this area. And uh, just to show you this incredible correlation, here is the uh, base currency, uh, and this is the stock market again. And here is. Uh, interest rates, and you can see this little blip on the end that's so insignificant. That's that quarter point rate. <laughs> it's, it's silly that that is having an effect on the markets, but it is. Now I'm going to zoom up again uh, from the crisis of 08 to today. And uh, what you see here is the creation of base currency and this incredible correlation to the stock market that is... It, the this only being just a coincidence is an impossibility the creation of base currency absolutely is responsible for the levitation of the stock markets there's no possible chance 
that uh, this is coincidence. The, the, this correlation is just too tight. But what I noticed here is that um, you know, in, they took off the training wheels in, uh, when they tapered in 2014, and the stock market kept on going, but then it crashed right back down to base currency, and then it got levitated again, and it's crashing again. But in making this chart just a, a, a little while ago, I noticed this, uh, that base currency is suddenly shrinking. And I'm going to zoom up now to just this top so that you can see uh, the divergence here and what's going on. And I find this very interesting. We ended uh, QE. The markets kept on going without the training wheels. And then it crashed, and it exactly matched base currency again for a little while. And then it levitated again. Now it's crashing, but look at where base currency is. Base currency is diving, so this crash that we're in now could have a lot further to go. But when I look at this chart, I also notice something else, that there is in the stock market, the red line, there's a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder that has developed. And there's a neckline, and we are piercing the neckline right now. When I uh, do charts of the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, on this close-up, you can clearly see this head and shoulders pattern that has developed and a neckline. Uh, here is the Wilshire 5000, much broader uh, measurement of the market. And again, very, very clear head and shoulders pattern that has developed. And here, we've already broken the neckline. Uh, this is a chart, uh, equal weighted U.S. stock index, um, and this is from uh, Zero Hedge, I believe. But here you see an even more pronounced head and shoulders pattern and a neckline that has always already broken. Now, for people that uh, don't uh, know what a head and shoulders pattern is, a stock uh, rises and then loses steam and starts to fall and then bounces and it exceeds its previous high but it loses steam again and falls, and that's a sign of weakness. And then if, if it starts to rally again, but can't exceed its previous high, that's like confirmation that this stock is weak and it's going down. And when it falls, you, you take these two previous times that it fell, you draw a line across those, that's called the neckline. Uh, when it breaks that neckline, the predicted move is that if you took the neckline like a hinge and flipped the head upside down, that that's the area that we're going to. So this is equally weighted U.S. stock index. This is a global stock market cap index. This again is from uh, Zero Hedge. But you clearly see this head and shoulders pattern again uh, on this global stock index. So this is a worldwide event that we are in for. Uh, head and shoulders patterns are one of the most reliable. It's not, it doesn't prove out every time, but probably 60% of the time that you see a head and shoulders pattern, um, it will end up proving itself out. And here I take a 20-year view of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and you see that head and shoulders pattern. And the reason I'm taking this 20-year view of the head of the Dow, and this is the Wilshire 5000, is because I wanted to show that we have a long, long way to fall potentially in this crash. Um, investors have been uh, very nervous and they pay attention a lot more, and a lot of people believe that they can ride the stock market and all get out before the next crash. So they're just sitting on that exit button just waiting to get out. And lastly, I want to show you a chart of gold over the same time period. It's been a much more stable, uh, better investment than uh, stocks over this same time period. Uh, so I think that we are in for something very dramatic. I think that uh, you know 2016 is going to go down as a record year. Uh, we will probably be seeing a bounce in the stock market sometime soon, but um, uh, but I do believe that the top is in, and that stocks are not the place to be anymore. Uh, I think gold could go down a little bit more if it breaks a thousand. Uh, spreads are going to go huge, and you won't be able to buy physical um, 
physical won't go down. It will diverge from the spot price of the commodities exchange contracts, the futures that determine gold's price. So the futures contracts price may go down, but physical won't. And so that is my update. I think uh, that this is the year that uh, stocks roll over. The last couple of crashes, it took uh, you know two and a half years here, took about a year and a half in the 08 crash. And I think this one could be even faster. I think people are uh, investors that have been burned twice now this century are uh, very nervous and all the people, the baby boomers that uh, have their savings tied up in the market, their retirement, uh, they want to try and protect that. So as this starts to go down, I think you're going to see more and more people exit stocks much more quickly than they did last time. So that's my view on